Multiple names from both AEW and WWE are gone from their respective companies. WWE warn about a social media scam and my review of Monday Night Raw. I'm Luke Owen and this is the WrestleTalk News. As we talked about a lot at the tail end of last year, 2024 was going to be the year of contracts after both WWE and AEW signed talent to five-year deals back in 2019. AEW because they were a new company and WWE because they were afraid people would go to that new company and because they'd just gotten a huge revenue increase from their TV rights. WWE have got a lot of contracts coming up or in the case of Becky Lynch have already expired with Chad Gable's deal coming up this Friday. Friday, Natalia and Dijax up soon, and Fightful Select reported over the weekend that both Ricochet and Angel Garza's deals are up this summer. The feeling is that most of these people will re-sign, but WWE have let some of their contracts expire. It was reported last month that WWE were letting go of Drew Gulak, Boa and Scripts from their deals, and that date has now come, with all three of them being moved to the alumni page of WWE.com. Interestingly, Becky Lynch's superstar page is still on the active roster. Drew Gulak was kept off TV for the last few months of his deal, following Ronda Rousey making accusations against him for pulling on the drawstring of her sweatpants. Gulak denied the story, claiming that he went to shake her hand but accidentally grabbed her drawstring. Boa had several matches on NXT Level Up late last year, but hasn't had a match with WWE since an NXT house show last December. Scripps did an interview with Fightful last month where he confirmed that he will continue to wrestle under the name Sidney Akeem and has been booked for GC shows this month and in July. Over on the AEW side of things, and four names were removed from their roster page. As announced last week, Arn Anderson was not going to re-sign with AEW once his contract was up. Cody Rhodes teased on a podcast last month that he would like to have a manager again, and there is some speculation he could reunite with his Nightmare family member on WWE TV. Similarly, Mark Henry announced on Busted Open Radio that he would not be re-signing with AEW once his contract was up, and is now a free agent. It was reported by Body Slam last week that Jake Hager's deal with AEW was up at the end of May and Fightful Select noted AEW sources indicated there was no plan to use him. They also note that while he has retired from MMA, at least one promotion is interested in using him. And lastly, Paige Van Zandt's profile has been officially removed from the AEW roster page, following reports from Dave Meltzer this past April that she was done with the company. He noted on Wrestling Observer Radio at the time she decided she didn't want to be a wrestler. If she wanted to be a wrestler, she'd still be there. And quickly before we get into the Raw review, WWE's Adam Pearce has released a PSA warning against scam artists pretending to be wrestlers who've been asking people for money. He posted on Twitter, if you've given money online to the likes of Jey Uso and Seth Rollins, etc., I feel for you. I'm sorry that you got duped, but I can't help. Whatever job duties you believe I have, police work isn't one of them. Don't give strangers money online. This has been an AP PSA. We've got the Raw review coming up next, but before then, why not check out this clip from the most recent episode of Three Count, where we reviewed every United States champion in three words or less slash fewer. The Square Garden. Yeah. And then they did the battleground match, but I don't think he was supposed to lose the belts in that one. And the only way I found this Around, there are conflicting reports about one of the night's oh, more do this confusing to me, man. I, will, I need a trigger warning for this sort of thing. Can I? Become the new I don't US want to hear my voice. Champion. Owen shockingly lost the title to AJ at a Madison Square Garden house show several House weeks. show! And Styles was their heavy favourite House the show! Battleground. Oh and yeah! The ending of their match saw a meaningless ref bump, several traded submission attempts, <laughs> and then KO getting AJ's K. shoulders <laughs> on the mat, <laughs> all the referee counted a slow one, two, three. I can understand. So I went all the way through the back ends to try and find that. And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, AKA Bloody Hell, I hope you like the Judgment Day edition of Monday Night Raw in about five minutes. The show opened with Liv Morgan on her Liv Morgan Revenge Tour, putting over the social media numbers her kiss with Dom did last week as WWE missed it on television. Dom came out to his mega heat and said that when Rhea gets back, She's gonna kill Liv. Liv responded that she's gonna kill Dom too. And then she really, really started to get in on Dom Dom until Finn ran down for some Finn interference and cock blocked Dom. But not before Liv got a little ruffle of Dom's hair, which Michael Cole says that 
he actually quite enjoyed. Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser beat the ever-loving tar out of each other in their very good match, which saw Kaiser win when Sheamus just couldn't take any more. At one point, Sheamus shouted, Come on, you bitch! But it wasn't enough, and Kaiser got the pin after chop-blocking Shamo off the middle rope and getting a roll-up. Excellent pro wrestling. We also got another QR code for Uncle Howdy, who did a big interruption at the start of Raw Talk, which must have been nice for the five people who watch Raw Talk. Finn Balor beat Dragon Lee after some Finn interference from the Judgment Day in a decent little match. Carlito continued to attack Lee after the match, which brought out Braun Strowman and Rey Mysterio to chase them off. At first, I thought that Strowman's new t-shirt said one big job. Blow hand? Sami Zayn came out for a promo on Chad Gable, but he instead sent out his minions to do the talking for him. Zayn set up a match between the two at Clash of the Castle, and with Gable's contract ending this Friday, I am guessing that they are pretty confident that they're going to re-sign him. And Gable blindsided Sami from behind. Chad berated Otis to hit Sami, but he couldn't do it. So Tozawa stepped in between them. Gable then berated Tozawa until Maxine stepped in between them. And then they were all told to leave. And in the scuffle, Sami bumped into Otis, who bumped into Tozawa and Maxine, and Chad told him that Sami did that on purpose. So Otis gave Sami the world's strongest slam. A very good segment, and the crowd were again super into Otis. He'll face Sami Zayn next week. Bron Breaker beat Ricochet in a good match that was all about putting Bron over, and it did just that. His Frankensteiner was nuts. He tried to kill Ricochet after the match, but Ilya Dragunov ran down for the save. Kiana James had her debut match on Raw, beating Natalia in a short and heatless match, which is to be expected, given that this is the first time that many are seeing Kiana James. This is also a great use of Natalia. Backstage, she did an Owen and said that enough was enough, and it was time for a change. Wait, is she gonna join the Nation of Domination? And Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark again blew off Sonya Deville. Braun Strowman quickly beat Carlito despite some interference. This was set up earlier in the show in a backstage segment which also featured R-Truth and Miz doing some comedy. They're still the tag champs, by the way. The big news here, though, is that Dominic got physical, hitting Strowman with a chair before the big man punched it out of his hand, and then he chased him round like his pants were full of doo-doo. I'm Braun Strowman, I'm going to go Dominic Mysterio! He was about to get his hands on Dominic Mysterio, but Liv Morgan defended him and Judgment Day beat down Braun. Liv tried to get more of Dom, but Finn ran in some interference and cock blocked him once again. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair had Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark beat until, wait, is this, is this a three-way feud? You know what that means? A sh DQ finish! The witches attacked Bianca and then challenged the champs to a title match at Clash of the Castle. Look, I don't know if this is actually a three-way feud, I'm just being glib, but if it isn't, I don't know why we're protecting Baszler and Stark with a DQ. It's also interesting to note that three Scots will be challenging for championships in Scotland, and the heavy rumours are none of them will win their matches. Eek. Given how expensive those tickets are, I don't think this is the best way to appease the Scots. Jey Uso announced himself for Money in the Bank next to this most awkward dad who would totally be me if I was in the same position. And backstage, Lyra Valkyria also announced herself for Money in the Bank before EO Sky felt that it was just one of those days and ran in like a freight train. I guess Lyra was the first to complain, so she left with the bloodstain. Damn right EO is a maniac, and you'd better watch your backs because EO is effing up this program. I guess. If you're stuck up, then you're just lucked up, and then you will be next in line to get effed up. Look, your best bet is to just stay away, mother fluffers. It's just one of those days. They'll have a match next week. AOP beat New Day when Karrion Cross and Scarlet both did distractions and interference, and Kofi wasn't there to get the Woods hot tag. He got hit by the water rush for a win. Story here is that Woods is the loser of New Day, so Cross can try and woo him over to his crew of spooky goths. And the main event saw Damian Priest beat Rey Mysterio after. <sighs> Judgment Day Finterference! Drew McIntyre attacked Damien Priest after the match and beat up the rest of Judgment Day, but distracted himself with Michael Cole, and Priest chokeslammed Drew through the announcer's table. It capped off a show with, for my money, too much fucking Judgment Day! It was your typical Triple H filler show the week before the go-home show, and I guess is three out of five. Dan Layton and I will be reviewing the show in full over on the WrestleTalk podcast later on, but until then, you can watch the pair of us go over this month's big movie releases for Cineworld Cinemas.